Hi, everybody. Like and subscribe. I'm Kelly at K E L O Y T H O. On I got the whole thing in this time on Twitter and Instagram. And with me, as always, I am Dr. Mike at Official Pagan on everything. Like and subscribe. Yeah, redundant. <laughs> totally covered it. It's so unnecessary. But we'll put the graphic up twice just because we can. Uh, so welcome back. We're here to talk some more retro gaming and a kind of very interesting discovery uh, that I made recently that I wanted to make you folks aware of. So when I say Batocera, Mike, what do you think of? Say it again. Batocera. I don't know what I think of. Sorry. <laughs> you don't know. I kind of would think it's like, is that a wine? <laughs> is that whatever? Uh, but it is, it's actually an open source free uh, retro gaming platform. Uh, okay. I think, think uh, Super Console X if you've got a working version, <laughs> kind of that thing. So keep so, rubbing it in. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, I'm just, but this might be, this might actually be of interest to you. So, um, how many, extra laptops do you have laying around your house there's a few i think a few. yeah i have i had four four okay. four kind of in you know that had over various times been decommissioned uh out of uh, out of use uh and so i still have the one that i use for all of our stuff and and uh, another one for my 3D printer and some stuff there. But uh, in addition to those, there were kind of these these orphans that are all older. I mean, these are pretty anywhere between, you know, I don't know, four to eight years old laptops at least. Uh, it's just a mix of them. And they were just kind of all sitting in the drawer. I didn't know, really know what I was going to do with them. And the very cool thing, I came across this video and I want to give credit because originally uh, when we were going to do this, I was going to kind of provide a step-by-step, -step, okay, here's how you do it. But the the YouTube channel that uh, I came across this on, it's Wagner's Tech Talk. He, I followed his instructions on how to do this step-by-step -step and set it up. It all worked great. Uh, and so I figured, why, why would we repeat that? We'll just point people to the really good content that he did. But I kind of just talk about it in general, make sure people are aware of it, because you really should kind of check this out. Uh, what really caught my I'm totally unaware of everybody's knowledge. <laughs> this is this is super cool. Um, and what caught my eye was it says, "Hey, do you have a ten-year-old laptop that that doesn't do anything anymore? You can turn it into a gaming system in about fifteen minutes." I was like, "Hmm, I have lots of laptops. <laughs> I need to do some things with." So uh, this is you know, what, what it is advertised that so it's very much like you would, and I'm, I'm continue to have to bring it up Super Console X because the interface looks a lot like it. Um, emulation station, I believe is the freeware front end GUI to say, hey, you got a bunch of games, you got a bunch of categories of games, you've got settings to configure uh, your system, your Wi-Fi, your controller. So all the menus look very, very much like a Super Console X series of menus. And emulators available with Botocera run the gamut from multiple Amiga models to Atari models to Dreamcast, C64, uh, Dream, all over the board. So just a huge number of emulators are available. PlayStation, at least up through two. Uh, and just a, a huge number of things. And Daphne which uh, appears to be a emulation package dealing with kind of making uh, former Laserdisc games like uh, Dragon's Lair available. And so they're all there. The menuing's there. It looked, like I said, very much like my Super Console X. But uh, here's the thing. It is, it is a snap to set this up. You will include, I will include links. I highly recommend Go to the video we'll include that gives you the step by step, but we'll also include a couple links to the key places if you want to just shortcut it and feel like you can nail it on your own. Uh, but you go to the botocera.org website and you download uh, the the image uh, for uh, for the the gaming platform. Uh, it's not it takes a little while to download, but nothing like trying to download a coin ops X or something like that. So you get that downloaded. Uh, you get something uh, that's called Etcher. 
uh, another thing I wasn't familiar with, free, free tool uh, available. And what Etcher does is it basically burns an operating system image to a USB or an SD card. So you, you download Bonacera, you run Etcher on it uh, to put it onto a USB. You then take that USB over to your, your laptop that hasn't done crap for you in a long time, <laughs> stick it in there, uh, fire up your laptop, hit, depending on what it is, often it's uh, F12, you wanna get to the boot menu to say, don't boot from the hard drive, boot from the USB. Uh, so you, you do that and bang, the system's up and running. You then want to take a couple more steps to actually install it on your hard drive so you don't have to use the USB anymore. Uh, that takes a, a little bit of time because you got to get your Wi-Fi connected so it can pull down the rest of the components it needs to. But I mean, I'm serious. It was a minimal amount of time for for folks trying it. And I mentioned the this on uh, Wagner's Tech Talk, the, uh, the video is fantastic. There's really uh, very few things he misses. Uh, the one thing he does miss is that when you first pull this image down, uh, it's a, a dot IMG, which I'm used to seeing for an operating system kind of thing, dot GZ, which was a compression I wasn't super familiar with. And so I figured, oh crap, I've got to, I've got to get more software to, to unpack this. Uh, turns out though that Etcher handles that for you. Etcher will take the compressed file and decompress it and kind of load it on the USB. So basically you need to go to the Bonacera website, pull down the image, get at your, put it on your USB, go over to your computer, boot off the USB, follow the menus to go ahead and install it on your hard drive. And you've got a gaming system, plug in your, um, you know, your, my, your uh, Xbox One controller. And I was playing Doom. And it was a really good version of Doom. Uh, I was able to actually fire, which, you know, I had some problems with my Super Console Hex uh, initially, uh, having the ability to, uh, I could uh, change weapons one way and had no fire button. All of that is clearly resolved there. It has a Super Nintendo system version of Donkey Kong. Uh, and so there are, there's a, there's, you know, it's not a huge number, it's maybe like, I don't know, 15 games preloaded, a variety of things, some freeware, some shareware couple ports and all that, but it got up and running. Uh, and um, while it will take a little while longer to, I think probably hunt down what else I'd want to kind of put on here where the Super Console X came with, you know, a gazillion things on there that ran for me, it didn't run for Mike, <laughs> but uh, the, uh, uh, but it looks like I could kind of go through and, and uh, kind of cherry pick what I'd like to put on there but it's now a laptop that was getting no use that's a fully functioning uh, gaming system that I can either run up to my projector if I want to or I'm, I'm kind of interested to see I've had mixed results so far with my Super Console X getting it into the At Games Legend and kind of using the At Games controller and play it on that screen uh, maybe give it a shot here with this laptop and see if if my situation's any better so um, just never heard of this, came across, if you've got an old laptop lying around, you want to kind of experiment with some retro gaming stuff, this is not going to be a big time investment. You're not going to need to, um, need to know a whole lot of technology on it because in terms of, you know, you don't have to like partition the hard drive or do anything on your old system. You will be, and I think it's important to note, once you install this, you are installing an operating system. <laughs> so if you had a Windows machine, and you put this on there, you no longer have a Windows machine. You now have a Linux instance of this, uh, of this uh, gaming platform. Uh, and if you ever want to go back to your Windows thing, I well, hope you kept your diskettes <laughs> or your CDs or whatever you need to do uh, to be able to reload that version of Windows onto your, your laptop. But these are ones that we're just never going to see any use anymore. They've got Windows XP on them, these different kind of things. I just wasn't going wasn't gonna to do anything. But it's actually really cool. And I'll try and uh, include a, a clip of at least like Doom, me uh, Doom on the uh, the laptop, so you can get kind of a look at that. Very nice. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in checking this out. There's definitely a few old laptops around here. Yeah. Also, uh, because this is open source and a very flexible framework, you can put it on all sorts of other platforms too, including uh, Raspberry Pi four. So nice. Uh, so that may be that might be even a quicker and easier fix for you there, and then you'd have 
kind of a, a Super Console X kind of platforming option to do a bunch of different things. And that could be that could be a different way to go. And I, I was kind of thinking, because you're more of a Raspberry Pi guy, that that might be a, another route you could take on that. But I think there's a couple. Yeah, definitely. And that's something I could do and drop that inside the uh, Atari Flight Stack. There you go. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that could be really good. Yeah. So that would be, that might be a fun way to go on that. So I just, I came across, I thought it was good. I thought the video was, was incredibly uh, helpful in terms of kind of doing the, the setup. It didn't have a problem uh, at all. Uh, the other, just one other little thing that caught me, it took me a little while to figure out, was when you actually run Etcher to create this disk image. You have to run it as administrator. It's a Windows thing. Um, you have to run it as administrator because I tried kind of repeatedly to get it done and it was crashing and crashing. I went to their web, to Etcher website and did a little bit of reading and said, I'll run it as administrator. I went back and I was good to go. So a very easy thing to do. I like the ones that I actually kind of try out and they work <laughs> and they work right away and, and it was fun. And so if you got an unused laptop or Raspberry, some Raspberry Pi 4, uh, kind of opportunities as well. You could very quickly put on what to me looks like an incredibly serviceable and and fun to use uh, gaming platform that comes loaded with a couple good things to begin with. So I think it was worthwhile taking a look at. Very nice. Um, so that's all I had. That's a, that's a, shockingly, actually a quick episode for us this week, which is not a bad thing. <laughs> not at all. Just make sure everybody likes and subscribes. Indeed. So when we get to a thousand, Vex is having a party. It's not somewhere like Mike says. We know exactly <laughs> we know exactly where it's going to be. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>